Hi, this is Mrs. La Barbara. This is Physics Chapter 8, Video 1. Um, today's topic is charge as a quantum. Now get it out. Know the structure of an atom. Uh, know the difference between neutral and a charged object. <clears throat> know the definition of elementary charge and, and the coulombs. So there are two um, units of charge. One is elementary charge and one is coulombs. You need to know the difference between the two. You need to understand the electrons can be removed from or added to an object. Only electrons can be uh, removed or added. Only the whole number of elementary charge are permitted in nature. And the elementary charge and charging coulombs are interchangeable. That's the two unit of charge you can convert. You'll have to be able to convert between the two. So here is be able to convert elementary charge and the charging coulombs also determine if a particular charge in either unit is permissible. Is that a whole number of elementary charge or not? And be able to determine the charge on an object. So the structure of a matter. So we have learned, hopefully in chemistry, all material in the whole world, everything is uh, is composed of atoms. So what is an atom? Atom is this tiny particle that made of a center part that's called a nucleus and an electron goes constantly moving around it. So that's the structure of an atom, the basic, um, very basic concept. Now let's take a look so inside item, we, we said there is nucleus. Nucleus has proton and neutron. And also, there is the electron going around the nucleus. Proton is tightly bound, uh, has positive charge, very massive. Massive means comparing the mass of electron. It's about a thousand times more than electron the mass of electron. So neutron is another particle that's very massive. It's almost the same size as proton. And also tightly bound to the nucleus. And uh, But neutron has no charge. Proton has positive charge. On the other hand, electron is weakly bound. Weakly bound, that means it can be added or removed easily. Not proton or neutron. None of protons or neutrons can be added or removed easily. You can remove or add neutrons, but not easily. On the other hand, electron can be added or removed very easily. So electron is outside of nucleus, it's weakly bound. So because it's weakly bound, it can be added or removed easily. Now let's see what's the difference between neutral versus charged object. So the charged object contains an equal number of protons and neutrons. So if you have um, more protons, then the object is positive, positively charged. You have, if you have more electrons, then the object is neg negatively charged. If they are the same, you have the same amount of protons and electrons, then the object is neutral. So that's the difference between neutral and charged object. Charged object, the protons and neutrons are unbalanced. On the other hand, neutral object, new, uh, electrons equals to new uh, protons. They are the same, same amount. Again, I can't emphasize this enough, is protons and neutrons cannot be removed. Only electrons can be removed or added. Let's take a look at this example. So which part of atom is most likely to be transferred as a body acquires static electric charge? So we just went over this. The answer is electron. Neutron and uh, proton cannot be removed easily. What is a positron? Positron is a positive electron. It doesn't really exist in nature. It's a man-made particle. Another example. So a glass rod is given a positive charge by rubbing it with silk. The rod become positive. How does it become positive? Does, can it gain electron to become positive, gain proton to become positive, lose electron or losing proton? So the key concept here is only electron can be removed. Protons, you cannot gain or losing protons. So to become positive, you have to lose the electron. 
is the answer. How do we measure measure charge? So there are two ways to measure charge, kind of similar. Like measure mass, we have different units. We can use pound, not standard, or we can use kilograms, which is standard. But in electricity, both are standard. We can use elementary charge. That's one way to measure uh, the charge. So what is the elementary charge? An electron and a proton have the same amount of charge. That amount of charge, um, we call that charge on the electron or on a proton elementary charge. So electron has negative one elementary charge, proton has positive one elementary charge. Again, protons and electrons have the same amount of charge, and these are listed in your reference table. So if an object has a positive 5.6 times 10 to the 7 elementary charge, what does this mean? A positive means it has less electrons. So this means the object has this many 5.6 times 10 to the 7 more protons than electrons. That means the object has lost that many of electrons. On the other hand, if the object has a negative 5.6 times 10 to the 7 electrons, this means the object has 5.6 times 10 to the 7 more electrons because it's negative than proton. The other way to measure the charge is coulombs. So uh, that is uh, what we use in all calculations, most likely in all the equations we use coulombs. So how is coulomb measured? So one coulomb of charge is a very, very big charge. One coulomb, in one coulomb, there are 6.25 times 10 to the 18 elementary charges. We call that amount one coulomb. It is a very, very big quantity, so smaller charges such as microcoulomb and nanocoulomb are often used. You can check your reference table. Microcoulomb means 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. Nanocoulombs, nano, the prefix nano is 10 to the negative 9 coulombs. So if an object has a charge of negative 0 0.2 microcoulomb, this means the object has 0 0.2 times 10 to the negative 6 times each coulomb has 6.25 times 10 to the 18 electrons. So a point, this object has that many excess electrons. Now that's uh, working on some conversion. So we know these are our conversion factors. So one coulomb has 6.25 times 10 to the 18 elementary charge, and one elementary charge uh, equals to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So actually, if you use 1 divided by 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19, that's the number you will have, 6.25 times 10 to the 18 elementary charge. So there are different ways to convert it. So one way to convert it is to cancel out a unit. For example, how many are coulombs in three electrons? You want to change electron to coulomb, so you have to divide the electron, multiply by coulomb. So one electron equals to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulomb. This way, electron and electron cancels, you have left is coulomb. So why do I multiply by this number? Because this number equals to one. Take a look, 1e equals 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. If I divide both sides by 1e, then this divided by 1e equals to 1. So any number times 1 equals to itself. That's one way we can convert. So this will give us 4.8 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Now let's go backwards. How do we convert elementary char uh, nanocoulombs to elementary charge? So this is a two-step problem. First, we have to convert nanocoulombs to coulombs. Nano means 10 to the negative 9. So again, nanocoulombs, you multiply nanocoulombs, multiply by coulombs, because again, this quantity equals to 1. So 0 0.62, 0 0.62 times 1 times 10 to the negative 19, uh, negative 9, because negative 9 is the prefix for nano. So 1 nanocoulomb is... 10 to the negative 9 coulomb. Now we have to convert coulombs to elementary charge. So again, 1 coulomb equals to 
a 6.25 times 10 to the 18 elementary charge. So this top number divided by 1 coulomb equals to 1. So this way, coulomb and coulomb cancel, we have elementary charge. So your answer should be 3.875 times 10 to the 9 elementary charge. Now, what are the possible charges on any object? Since objects are charged through electron transfers, so the charged object must have either excess or absence of the whole number of electrons. It cannot have a fraction of electrons, such as half of electron, right? It can have excess of 50 electrons or 4 electrons, or minimum 1 extra electron or 1 less extra electron. You can have 3 quarters or 1 half or 7 eighths of electron. So, the, whole, the object must have a whole number of electrons. So as a result, the object has to have a multiple of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs because that is the charge in coulombs of one electron. For example, an object may have a charge of 4.8 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. This is a, a three excess of three protons, but not 4.8 times 10 to the negative 20 coulombs, because that is the amount of 100th or 300th of an electron. So smallest charge on any object can be positive or negative, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Let's take a look at an example. An object has three excess electrons. What is the elementary charge? One electron is one elementary charge, so this is negative 3e3 because it's excess electrons. What is the amount of charge in coulombs? We know 1e is 4.8, so 3 is just 3 times 1.6. I mean, 1e is 1.6 times 10 to negative 19. 3e is 3 times that number. You'll have negative 4.8 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Okay, another. Uh, example, object has 75 protons, 65 electrons, what is the elementary charge? So as a total, you have 10 protons excess, so it's positive 10e. How many coulombs? 10 times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. And that's what you have. An object cannot have what charge? The charge has to be multiples of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. So which one is not a multiple 1.6, which is number 2. Okay, last example. What is the magnitude of charge in coulombs of a lithium nucleus containing 3 protons and 4 neutrons? We know neutron has no charge. Protons has elementary charge. So what is a 3 elementary charge in coulombs? So one elementary charge is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. Whoops. Three, you will have three times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. So you have a positive 4.8 times 10 to the negative 19. Again, this one is asking you the magnitude. So it's not necessary to put a positive. I'm putting positive because over here, just to show you, it has more protons. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.